G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for another video today. Today, having a bit of a different look at it, this is sort of the video that I would make around about the trade period, but I got inspired recently, and I'm going to have a crack at picking one player for each AFL team, that if they had the power to steal one player from the competition at large, which player would they steal for their own club? So essentially, I'm going to go through all 18 teams alphabetically, starting at Adelaide. I'll look at that team's specific needs for their list, both from a position positional standpoint and a talent standpoint, but also an age standpoint and also, the, you know, the potential salary that they're about to incur. So for instance, you know, clubs that are probably paying out the maximum of their salary cap, for instance, like a Brisbane that comes to mind, I'm not necessarily going to go and pick the All-Australian defender, Sam Doherty, because they can't really afford him. Likewise, I'm going to consider list needs as well, you know, for someone that's rebuilding, like a West Coast, I'm not going to say Buddy Franklin, the 35-year-old who is about to retire in one year. So I'm going to try and keep this as realistic as possible, whilst also acknowledging None of these trades are actually realistic. Before we crack into the list of 18 players, I will give a shout out to the sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com. For all your male grooming needs, be it the body hair trimmer, the lawnmower 4.0, the weed whacker, the nose and ear hair trimmer, or your ball deodorants, ball moisturizers, the crop reviver, your boxes, all of those different sorts of accessories and consumables. There's a huge variety of things you can get at manscaped.com to level up your grooming routine. And the exciting thing is you get 20% off and free shipping simply by being a true footy viewer and you use the code truefooty20 at checkout. So that's 20% off and free shipping and you'll be supporting the channel. Now let's crack into the list, starting with the Adelaide Crows. So when I'm considering Adelaide, I am looking both where they are on the ladder and their positional needs as well. So a couple come to mind. I think they could use another key defender. I think, uh, was it Fisher Maccasy just retired as well? And their key backs of Butts, Murray and Worrell. Uh, I could use some reinforcing. That being said, if I have one player to choose from, a key back may not necessarily be top of the menu for them. I also think they could use a taller sort of big bodied midfielder with a lot of X factor potentially who could play forward as well. So when I look at their young midfield, it's, it's not untalented, but it's a little bit sameish, a little bit smaller bodied. For me, I'd be looking at a taller midfielder, potentially with some utility forward or back as well. And I'd be looking at someone approaching their prime because Adelaide are sort of coming to the final years of a rebuild and they're going to start challenging soon. So they're not going to like this, but my one player that they would steal would be Connor Rosie of the Port Adelaide Footy Club. As far as X Factor goes, it's hard to go past him. He's obviously in the right age bracket, massively talented. It helps that he's from South Australia as well. Once you get over the fact that you're stealing him from your rivals, Adelaide will be very, very happy to pick up a player of Connor Rosie's talents. Next, you've got the Brisbane Lions, and this one is a tricky one because they've just recruited so heavily. So I used the example in the introduction of this video and said that I can't just pick, you know, the best player in the, the position that they need. Um, I'm going to have to consider someone a little bit not quite established, but obviously talented enough to make this pick worthwhile. So they've recruited heavily in Dunkley, Danaher, Gunston, Ashcroft, and Fletcher over the last, uh, well, that was all the last trade period, wasn't it? Given the salary cap pressure, they would need to go for a younger option, although the guy I've got in mind is not super young but he probably hasn't hit his prime yet. What I'd be looking for is an under 24 year old general defender, someone who can contribute now but also be there in a few years time and I want a player with a bit of dash, a bit of speed, a bit of skill by foot as well and I'm going to say Nick Blakey from the Sydney Swans would be who I nominate for the Brisbane Lions. I think his potential contract is something they could negotiate and, and manage under the cap. That's why I said, you know, I wouldn't necessarily pick Sam Doherty, but he's 23 years old. He was in the 22 under 22. If they can make it work financially, that would really round out Brisbane Lions best 22. Next, we've got the Carlton Footy Club who, uh, you know, from a list point of view, are very, very strong in terms of the key areas. So you, your midfield, your spine, um, your key forwards in particular. For me, I, I looked at two list needs maybe for Carlton. Uh, one of them was a sort of general forward who can kick goals as a, either a small or a medium marking option. I know there's a bit of expectation on Jesse Motlop this year and hopefully he comes good, but I've actually decided to go for another key defender to pair up with Jacob Wiedering down back. So I've thought about someone who is probably pre-prime, but not that far off it. And I'm going to go with Sam DeConning to pair up with his brother TDK at the Blues as that sort of tall key back option. Between he and Wiedering in particular, I think they offset each other's skills nicely and uh, also the brotherly connection with TDK as well uh, makes for a nice narrative there. So Sam DeConning to the Blues. For Collingwood, this is another team that is in their window. However, we could probably only afford it a younger sort of option as well when you consider the fact that they just splashed some cash on guys like Tom Mitchell and um, Dan McStay as well. They don't want to go too young, but probably someone uh, before their prime as well. They just recruited Frampton as a key defender and I still think that's the area of the ground that needs 
need some reassurance. So if I was looking at some of the better tall defender prospects in the league, I'd probably go with Denver Granger Barras. I think despite being young and lightly framed, uh, his intercept style and his athleticism allow him to contribute from a pretty young age. And I think that he could come in and perform pretty well. And also he's not so far into the prime of his career that he would cost a whole heap as well. So that's a dream trade scenario for the Pies. Next, we've got Essendon. And this is another team looking at a finals tilt who probably want to be looking at players in their prime who is going to surge them up the ladder in the short term as much as the medium term and long term. Looking at their list, I thought small forward talent was probably a need. They do have Tipper back this year and they recruited uh, the Davy Twins as well and uh, Mon- Monkara as well was an NGA prospect as well for them. So in a sense that they've recruited for that need. They drafted in a high volume mid in Sardis and a key back in Lewis Hayes as well. So they're without glaring list needs. I've also got Weedham in, in as a key forward um, who despite being a top 10 prospect previously when he was drafted um, obviously carries a bit of a risk there as well. So I still think their their biggest need if they could pluck one player would be a partner to Peter Wright and I would say that it would be Max King from St Kilda. A three-pronged attack of King Stringer and Peter Wright is quite daunting and I think would be maybe not the uh, absolute ticket back into the eight, but it does make them a much more dangerous proposition. And he's young enough that he would be there throughout their premiership window too. Then we've got Fremantle who are currently entering their premiership window, so to speak. They uh, were fifth on the ladder last year and won a final. For me, from the outside looking in there, assessing their list need is quite simple. Um, an established key forward in their prime. Tabiner has been a solid player over the stretch without being you know, spectacular. And even still, he's playing a bit of a lone hand there. They've lost Rory Lobb. Amos is a bit young. And Nat Fife uh, may come in and do a role as a third tall forward, but I think still a key forward presence would be ideal for them. And I think they could potentially afford someone like Aaron Norton from the Western Bulldogs. There was an article linking them recently. I don't know how uh, valid that is in terms of Norton's interest to come back to Western Australia. But if they could click their fingers and get Aaron Norton, it would make them a very, very daunting premiership contender this year. Then we've got the reigning premiers, Geelong. And this is a tough one. They're the best team in the league. I don't really see any glaring list needs. They just added Bose, uh, Henry and Bruin and Jai Clark as well. Pick eight in the draft, I I think it was in the end. It's really hard to pick a weakness in this side, and you also factor in that their salary cap's probably going to be full, uh, assuming you know that because they just paid for Jack Bowes as well. Nonetheless, let's uh, let's have some fun with this and assume that in 12 months' time, Hawkins etc. will retire, uh, which may not happen. But let's say they have a little bit of money to spend. Where would they invest that money? I would say it's either a young midfielder or perhaps a dashing defender with a leg speed. I'm going to say Caleb Sarong would be their ideal prospect as well. Real tough Geelong style inside mid. Maybe it's a little bit same as to what they've already got, but I could really see Caleb Sarong performing in a Geelong jumper. For me, he would be that trademark cat sort of midfielder. I don't know why, I can just see it. Let me know in the comments if you disagree. Then we've got the Gold Coast Suns, who are A-side, slowly moving up the ladder. Linear improvement, slowly, slowly. Um, And I think, again, they're looking for a player entering their prime as well. The young mids are pretty solid. They've got uh, Miller and obviously sort of in the prime of his career and then Raul and Anderson amongst all the other sort of young prospects they've got littered around. Uh, this forward st- stocks are pretty strong. Obviously, Ben King comes back into the side. Lukosius and Toll are the talls. I don't really see any massive gaps there. I'm looking at the other end of the field and I think their tall defensive structure is probably the biggest weakness. Obviously, Sam Collins and Ballard are good players, but they probably lack that genuine, reliable, tall man who takes the tallest forward in the opposition each week, and I would say if they could pick one player to steal, it would be Carlton's Jacob Weedering. Weedering is, on his day, an absolutely elite key defender. He hits the right age bracket. He's captaincy material as well. I think it would be amazing if the Suns got Weedering. Now we've got the Giants, and this one's a little bit tough. They're kind of going through a bit of a forced rebuild, a little bit, in a sense, uh, with so many players leaving, and I think Therefore, they're probably looking for pre-prime talent or players that are uh, in their prime or about to hit their prime is uh, is ideal from a GWS perspective. I think ideally they just need someone on a long contract, but uh, we'll leave that for another day. They've obviously got Sam Taylor, who's the best young key defender in the league, you'd have to say, depending on how you define young. He's probably up there. He just won an All-Australian. They've just drafted Cadman, so the bookends are looking okay from a youth perspective. For me, I thought in their draft hand, they'd probably roll the dice on a couple of actual genuine midfielders. Um, I don't know too much about Ralston, but when you lose Taranto, Hopper, and Brun in one hit, and then grab some smaller and utility types. Um, I think that's probably a little bit of a a gap on the list, so to speak. So I'm thinking with this pick, I'm going to pick a 
a genuine on-baller. Factoring in on that as well, you know, it's a, they're in the expansion market. They want a player that's going to get some headlines. If they had to pick one player either, you know, in his prime or entering his prime, I'm going to say Bailey Smith. From a marketing point of view as well, uh, that would be very, very helpful for the Giants. I think if they could pick one player, it would probably be Bailey Smith. Next up, we've got the Hawthorne Footy Club who have gone really hard towards youth. Um, offloaded uh, Mitchell O'Meara and uh, drafted pretty heavily for mids in this year's draft as well. They got McKenzie Weddle and Husswait in last year's ballot. They signed an established wingman in Amon. They traded in uh, a ruck in Lloyd Meek. I think the strength is their defense, um, although they'll kind of want Goranger Barras to come good in this scenario. He hasn't left for another club. I think for me, when looking at their young midfielders, a sort of dynamic half forward flanker, high half forward slash midfielder who could come in and be that impact player. That would be the the missing piece from what they've already got, and arguably, you know, most clubs that have that missing piece, but someone who roams the flanks can run through the midfield and win clearances as well, and is a dynamic game changer. I know that Dylan Moore is a very good sort of small forward wingman midfielder as well, but I do think someone like Isaac Heaney would add another dimension to that Hawk side. Also a very marketable player, which I think would be attractive for them, but he had a breakout season last year, 49 goals from 25 games, and uh, turns 27 this year, so it's debatable whether he's in the right age demographic. But by the same token, they just recruited Carl Amon as well, so, so potentially some list balance there would serve them well, and I think Heaney is a genuine match winner. G'day guys, sorry for interrupting this part of the video, but I just wanted to take a moment in the middle of the video to talk to you a little bit about Druzy's Athlete Academy. Now, we'd like to hear from those of you out there who are new to the gym and perhaps feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Starting a fitness journey can be daunting, especially if you're new to the gym. There's a few obstacles that gym beginners will generally struggle with early on. It's poor form and technique, not having a plan, and not knowing what food to eat as well. But thankfully, there is a much better way to get started at the gym, and Druzy's Athlete Academy is all you need to begin your fitness journey. Take out the guesswork of being a beginner and follow a program that guarantees results. Druzy is a qualified exercise scientist and strength and conditioning coach for footballers. One-on-one -on -one coaching with Druzy will allow you to ensure that you're training properly, whilst also keeping you accountable and motivating you. He helps teenagers and young men try to gain muscle and strength, build a better physique, and feel more confident, energized, and motivated. Don't go to the gym blindfolded, take out the guesswork, and with Druzy's Athlete Academy, you can make your goals a reality. Through True Footy, you can get 20% off on any of the programs that Druzy is offering by two ways. You can either go to the website, druzysathleteacademy.com, and when you check out, use the code TRUEFOOTY20, or you can simply DM Druzy's Athlete Academy on Instagram, TRUEFOOTY20, for more information. Thanks for your time, guys. Let's get back to the video. Then we've got Melbourne. Uh, again, another tough one. They're a very well-rounded, strong best 22 who won the flag um, just over 12 months ago. Their key KPD trio of uh, main lever and petty is fantastic. They've got an elite midfield. Uh, the ruck combo is now Gorn and Grundy, so on the short term, they don't really have any real list need for a ruckman, but they don't really have any glaring list needs in terms of deficiencies. Uh, I think they've got Van Royen, who's going to be that next young prospect to throw himself into the side and potentially become that key forward prospect in the same way that Wiedemann kind of tried and uh, debatably failed. They did also draft Jefferson as well in last year's draft, so it's not a key forward they want. I'd probably be looking for another young ruck, which, um, which kind of burns them a little bit, considering they just lost Luke Jackson, but I'm talking about a young prospect, and they'll be looking at one who should have joined them, uh, if not for the Next Generation Academy rules changing a few years ago. I'd say they would probably be looking at someone like Mac Andrew. When you consider the fact as well, they don't have a lot of budget to blow and they're looking at high potential talents who could come good. I think Mac Andrew to the Melbourne Demons makes sense and he would fill a bit of a list need, absolutely no doubt, if he joined them. Then we've got the back-to-back -back wooden spooners at North Melbourne who are of course in a rebuilding phase, but again have been rebuilding for a number of years now and it's probably time for them to take the next step. They're not at the start of a rebuild like some other clubs. They're probably at the end of it. It's been a lean few years. They've drafted heavy. They had um, obviously Ward and Sheasel in last year's draft. I think what they'd love, both from an on-field perspective and a branding perspective, would be an absolute on-field star who could come in and uh, lift them straight away, both get bums on seats and potentially win games for them as well. I think they could also use some key forward support to Larky. Um, and when I say support, I'm going to probably pick one player who's not an obvious out-and-out -out star. He did win the common a couple of years ago, but in the description I just made, you were probably thinking someone like a Dugowie or something like that. Harry Mackay is my option. I think there's a romantic element there as well. His brother plays there to have both Ben and Harry playing in the same team. It would finally prove that they're not the exact same person. But again, the second time in this video, reuniting two brothers at the same club and also filling a need 
for North Melbourne, an established player who's going to kick them goals, one of the best in the competition at his position, and they can certainly afford him. So they tick all the boxes. Harry Mackay becomes a Roo. Next, we've got Port Adelaide, and this is an interesting scenario where they have already signed their dream trade scenario in Jason Horn Francis uh, just a few months ago. However, uh, coming up with a new one will be interesting. They've got some aging veterans in this side and then some young guns who are about to pop, in my opinion. I've talked about this in other videos as well. So it's an interesting list dynamic and one I pretty I really envy as an Eagles fan. I think potentially a key forward could be an ideal missing piece, so to speak. You know, Dixon's still around. Todd Marshall had 45 goals last year, I think, as well. And there's some rumors about Georgiatis returning to Western Australia. I don't know if they're true or not, but either way, someone to replace Dixon in a couple of years would be great. My nomination for them is the other South Australian Gold Coast uh, young gun, and that would be Jack Lacocious, who's currently earmarked as a role, you know, as a key forward target for the Gold Coast Suns, but we've seen him play out of defense as well, and potentially on a wing. He's got really, really good foot skills. He's versatile. And therefore, Port Adelaide can use him in any way they like and there's a bit of a romantic element of well as well of bringing back the South Australian talent and I think he's a high-end talent as well so Port Adelaide would be stoked to land Jack Lacocious. Next we've got Richmond and uh, they had an absolutely mammoth trade period as well. They've gone large on mids which they needed to getting Taranto and Hopper which was just an A-plus trade period in terms of what they brought in. They're also now as a result of that still in a flag window and therefore they've got an interesting list balance as well so they're going to want someone who's coming in in their prime but maybe you know not at the end of their prime I think they've got some aging stars all over the field so managing that transition is going to be a little bit awkward for them to be honest I don't think they're going to have you know money to burn just yet having just spent like what 14 years worth of contracts on Taranto and Hopper uh, I'm not too sure but I would argue in terms of a list need a best 22 wingman is probably something that uh, when you look at their best 22 they probably haven't got absolutely nailed in. And I'd be looking at a younger one who can help with the transition rather than an older one. I can feel myself rambling. I'm going to go with the youngster from Essendon, Nick Cox, who was kind of a little bit forgotten about, had a great 2021 season. And then in 2022, I think it was injury. He didn't add too many games to his tally. He's played 27 now. He's a 200 centimeter athletic beast who can play on the wing and uh, naturally I think he can play in the ruck and forward and back as well. So with him, you get some versatility. You certainly get that top end potential. And if they can somehow afford his contract, which I imagine they would because they're going to offload players in the coming years, I think he would slot into their 22 really, really nicely. So Nick Cox to the Richmond Tigers. Next, we've got the St. Kilda Footy Club who uh, this has been the common narrative for them for a while now, but I think they want to push to contend fairly imminently. Obviously, a bit of an awkward phase with a new coach still working out what the immediate direction of the club is. But I think similar to North, they're always going to want to be relevant. They're always going to want to have A-grade players who attract fans to games as well. I think looking at their list, I think their midfield lacks a bit of a punch. Obviously, Jack Steele is a gun. Um, and they, I think they've observed that themselves and, and tried to get a star player in Dugowie um, as recently as last year as well. Steele is A-grade, absolutely. And he's supported by Ross and Crouch. But I think that's a little bit thin there and probably a little bit same-ish as well. I'm going to say they want an elite talent in the prime of their career. It doesn't necessarily have to be a pure midfielder. I'd be looking at a half-forward midfielder option. Um, ignoring Jordan Degoe for a minute, they missed out on him. I thought it'd be a bit too lame to put him in this video. I'm going to go with another less obvious option in Zach Bailey, who I'm a huge fan of at the Brisbane Lions. Kicked 37 goals last year from 24 games, averaging 17 touches a game as well. And he kicked some bags as well, kicking six four and four at various points last year. So the Saints get a player who can run through the midfield and is, you know, a clutch in front of goal, a genuine match winner. And I think you would add something that the Saints genuinely don't have. Then you've got Sydney Swans. Uh, this is a tough one. Again, a very strong side, obviously, who just were runners up last year. Looking at their best 22, I think... The, the key defenders are a little bit on the short side. I think they would benefit from adding a genuine tall and stronger bodied key defender. Obviously, the McCartan brothers are, are great, but uh, they're probably not that sort of lumbering key defender type to match up on your Harry Mackays of the world. I've opted here for another uh, theft of a Crosstown Rivals, one of their best players. I'm going to say the Swans poach Sam Taylor from the GWS Footy Club. He's a 198 centimeter key defender from Swan Districts originally. Shout out Western Australia. Um, but he won his first All-Australian jump in 2022 and I'm a huge fan of the way this kid goes about it so being 198 centimeters he is that taller option to offset the McCartan brothers 
guys who are a little bit undersized from memory. I can't remember how tall Pat is, but I know that Tom's around that 193 mark. Either way, you're getting that top line talent in a side that is already very strong, but I think he does strengthen that best 22 by coming in. Next, you've got the West Coast Eagles and uh, gee whiz, where do they not need some help? Obviously looking at it at the start of the rebuild, they're looking for someone 22 and under, and uh, there's been a couple of healthy drafts there from West Coast perspective, but one area they haven't recruited for uh, at least they haven't invested a high pick into yet, is a key defender. So Oscar Allen is the man at the moment, hopefully, and he replaces Kennedy, but we have the obvious scenario soon of Jack Darling retiring in a couple of years as well. So for me, finding his replacement is priority numero uno. <laughs> For me, the best young key forward from WA on market is Logan McDonald. Maybe it's just because he's West Australian, I don't know, but I have a huge rap for this kid. He came second in the Bernie Naylor medal as a 17-year-old. For those that aren't aware, that is second across the competition in the Waffle Men's uh, League in 2020, the year he was drafted. For me, the prospect of Oscar Allen and Logan McDonald in the same forward line is very, very tantalizing. The Eagles would theoretically be able to afford it, and he is in the right age bracket, so make it happen, please. The final poaching in this video is the Western Bulldogs, who probably need, I say key back. So they've just added uh, Rory Lobb as another goal scoring option. And down back, they've now added Liam Jones to support Alex Keith as well. I would still argue that this is not, you know, the, the strongest part of the ground for them when you consider their strong midfield and now what I would describe as a strong forward line. It's better than it was, and somehow the dogs have always really made do. Alex Keith has done a, a great job, and we know the player that Liam Jones is. However, if we're talking about the dogs having a magic wand here and orchestrating a trade or a free agency, I would say they pick one of the best key defenders in the competition right now, and they're going to steal the Eagles' Tom Barras. Now, I believe this is actually founded in truth Somewhat. I think the Dogs did make a huge play for Barras uh, 12 months ago when he re-signed on a massive West Coast contract, which will basically guarantee him as an eagle for life. But again, we're, we're playing in a fantasy world here. As a genuine hulking key defender who can intercept and lock down on tall opposition forwards as well. He's 197 centimeters. I think he does definitely add something different to what the Bulldogs currently have. And I think that would make them a much better side if they had someone of Barras's caliber in their back line. So there you have it, guys. That is 18 players that I would steal on the behalf of all 18 clubs. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. Again, we, there's no chance we're all going to agree on the players that I've picked, uh, but hopefully my rationalizations uh, made a bit of sense and that you can see where I'm coming from. And by all means, let me know in the comments who you would steal for your club if you could have a magic wand to wave. Thank you so much for your support lately, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Hope you're enjoying the content. I'm enjoying making it. It's good to be back and I'll see you in the next video very soon. Cheers.